Israel's military accused Iran on Monday of sending suitcases of cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut before it then goes directly to Hezbollah. Without providing evidence, spokesman Daniel Hagari also said Israeli intelligence had discovered a bunker belonging to former Hezbollah head Hassan Nasrallah under a hospital in southern Beirut, an area with a strong Hezbollah presence, which holds millions of dollars of gold and cash. Hezbollah's financial network is based on two main sources of income. Money from the Iranian regime and money from the Lebanese people. Iran's Quds forces transfer money to Hezbollah from Iranian oil sold in Syria. Iran also sends suitcases of cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut, and then directly, it goes to Hezbollah, Hagari said. There are hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and gold inside the bunker right now. I'm calling on the Lebanese government, Lebanese authorities and the international organizations, don't. Don't allow Hezbollah to use the money for terror and to attack Israel. A Lebanese legislator has denied Israeli army statements that said Hezbollah is storing money and gold under his hospital in South Beirut. Member of Parliament Fadi Alama, who is the director of Sahel General Hospital, denied there are tunnels under the hospital and said that the medical center is now being evacuated. Alama who as a legislator is representing the area where Sahel General Hospital is located in a southern suburb of Beirut, called on the Lebanese army and other institutions to visit the area and inspect whether there is indeed a tunnel under the hospital. Alama told the local Al Jadi TV that the Sahel General Hospital is a private medical center that has underground operations rooms. He said the hospital has been in the area for 42 years and it is not linked to any political group. Hezbollah's main financial arm is the al qard el Hassan Association. It provides financial services to Lebanese civilians and pays the salaries of Hezbollah's operatives. al qard el Hassan, which violates the international law, is sanctioned by the United States and other Western countries. Hezbollah's financial network is based on two main sources of income money from the Iranian regime and money from the Lebanese people. Iran's Quds forces transfer money to Hezbollah from Iranian oil sold in Syria. Iran also sends suitcases of cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut and then directly it goes to Hezbollah. The Israeli Air Force carried out a series of precise strikes on these Hezbollah financial strongholds. One of our main targets last night was an underground vault with millions of dollars in cash and gold. The money was being used to finance Hezbollah's attacks on Israel. This vault was deliberately located under a residential building. Our strikes will degrade Hezbollah's ability to finance its attacks on Israelis. Tonight, I am going to declassify intelligence on a site that we did not strike where Hezbollah has millions of dollars in gold and cash, in Hassan Nasrallah's bunker. Where is, where is the bunker located? Directly under El Sahel Hospital, in the heart of, the, of Beirut in the Dahia. This is the hospital. From both sides you can see an entry and exit. Those are entry and exit tunnel shafts from the underground for the underground bunker. The entrance is located in the Al Mahdi building and the exit is located in the Al Sahal Center building. This is the bunker. It contains rooms, beds and infrastructure for long stays and the ability to direct combat from underground. Hezbollah built this bunker directly underneath this hospital. There are hundreds of millions of dollars in cash and gold inside the bunker right now. I'm calling on the Lebanese government, Lebanese authorities and the international organizations. Don't. Don't allow Hezbollah to use the money for terror and to attack Israel.
The Israeli military on Saturday released footage that it said showed Hamas leader Yehia Sinwar and his family in the hours before the October 7 attack on southern Israel. The video that the IDF said is from the night of October 6 in Khan Yunus, shows the Hamas leader along with three children and a woman, described by the spokesperson of the army, Rear Admiral Daniel Haggery, as Sinwar's children and wife, moving back and forth through a tunnel carrying various equipment including mattresses, water bottles and other objects. Haggery said that, throughout the war, Sinwar continued to hide underground and was forced to flee to Rafa when the Israeli military went into Khan Yunus, both areas located in southern Gaza Strip. According to Haggery, Sinwar's DNA was found on a piece of tissue a few hundred meters from the tunnel where six Israeli hostages were found dead in Tel Al Sultan, in Rafa, last month. There were no hostages with him when he was eliminated, Haggery said during the briefing on Saturday where he presented a second video, which he said showed the last moments of Sinwar. The footage showed tank shelling on a building where the figure of a person, which the IDF said was Sinwar, is visible through a window before the explosion. Sinwar was 61 when he was killed. He was Hamas' top leader and a mastermind of the October 7, 2023, attack that triggered the longest, deadliest and most destructive war in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Israel and Hamas have signaled resistance to ending the war in Gaza after the killing of Sinwar. The October 7 attack in Israel more than a year ago killed about 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and kidnapped another 250. About 100 hostages remain in Gaza, at least 30 of whom Israel says are dead. Hamas has reiterated that the hostages won't be released until there is a ceasefire and Israeli troops withdraw. Netanyahu says Israel's military will fight until the hostages are released and will remain in Gaza to prevent a severely weakened Hamas from rearming. Israel's retaliatory offensive in Gaza has killed more than 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who don't distinguish combatants from civilians but say more than half the dead are women and children. The IDF recently confirmed that Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, and the face of evil behind the October 7th massacre was killed in Rafa. Tonight we are declassifying footage of Sinwar from just a few hours before the October 7th massacre, as well as his movements inside Gaza as he fled over the past year. IDF operations in Khan Yunus forced Sinwar to flee to Rafa. Last month, Sinwar's DNA was found on a piece of tissue he used. A few hundred meters from a tunnel where six Israeli hostages were brutally ex executed in Tel Sultan in Rafa. Then Sinwar fled yet again. There were no hostages with Sinwar when he was eliminated. Killing Sinwar is the result of a year of operational and intelligence efforts to bring him and other Hamas leaders to justice. Sinwar has been eliminated, but our mission is not over. We will not rest until we bring all our hostages home.